Over the past year, chatting with you data has become a hot topic in the tech world. Industry leaders like Google, Microsoft, and Apple are heavily investing in this technology. Google is developing its Vertex AI platform, Apple is contributing research, and Microsoft just recently released its work on GraphRack. Since the ChatGPT boom began, we've seen a lot of advancements in AI models. They've become more powerful, cost-effective, and increasingly open source, Stunks. with new releases almost weekly. Meta's Llama model is a great example of this progress, offering an open source LLM with impressive performance and up to 405 billion weights. As AI startups pop up everywhere and vector databases become more important for building AI systems, retrieval augmented generation, in short RAG, has experienced its comeback. RAG helps with the challenge of model hallucination while making use of the powerful summarization capabilities of today's large language models. So when the RAG topic gained momentum last year, we wanted to create a simple demo built on top of VV8. What started as a demo project quickly evolved. We designed our first mockups, released the first version, and quickly realized that VV8 is actually super great for building RAG systems because it has all the features you need for RAG. First, efficient hybrid search combining BM25 with vector search, dynamic filters, multi-tenancy for data isolation, AutoCAD for controlling recall, and much more. So we watched with excitement as our project grew to over 6,000 stars on GitHub within a year. We named it Verba, and today I'll introduce you to our latest update, version 2. Verba is our open source rack assistant built for easy installation via PIP or Docker on your local machine. We've put a lot of effort to integrate it into the AI ecosystem, making sure it supports all the tools and services we love. It supports data engineering solutions like Unstructured IO and Firecrawl, allowing users to process and organize a wide variety of data types, such as PDF, doc, CSV, or plain text. We also put a lot of effort into supporting open source models powered by sentence transformers and Olama, making sure that you can run RAG completely locally on your own device. Of course, Verba also supports industry-leading AI services such as Entropic, Cohere, OpenAI, and many others, giving you access to state-of-the-art language models. The cherry on top is our funky looking interface that allows you to import documents and chat with your data in just a matter of minutes. So let's have a closer look. Regardless of your installation method, which we'll cover later in the video, you can launch Verba by simply typing Verba start in your terminal. The first thing you'll encounter is our new starting page, which offers a choice of VV8 deployments. For those new to our channel and VV8, we are an open source vector database capable of advanced search features such as keyword, vector, and hybrid search. VV8 provides flexible deployment options to cover all use cases. On the starting page, you can choose from free VV8 deployment options. First, a hosted VV8 cluster in the VV8 cloud, a locally Docker deployed VV8 cluster, or a local VV8 embedded cluster that runs on your device behind the scenes with no setup required. So depending on your requirements, you can either set up Verber locally or use the VV8 cloud console to spin up a free cluster in just a few minutes. To use the cloud option, simply log into VV8 cloud, create a free sandbox cluster, and you're ready to go. For the sake of simplicity, let's use the local version. This option will automatically set everything up for us and bring us directly into the Verba interface. When entering Verba, you're greeted with a nice little message that provides links to helpful resources. The first screen you'll see is the chat interface where you can query your data. However, before we start chatting, we need to import some data first. Let's navigate to the import data page. Here you'll find several options for adding content to Verba. First is Verba's default reader that supports a wide variety of file types, including PDFs, Excel, Markdown, and plain text files. For more advanced file types or features like OCR for PDF documents, you can use the unstructured API. If you want to fetch data from the web, you can also retrieve data from GitHub or GitLab repositories and also fetch HTML content directly from web pages. One of our exciting new additions is support for Firecrawl, a great API for retrieving high quality data from websites. Let's start with one of my favorite examples, Minecraft. I've got a whole folder containing various Minecraft related data. For those unfamiliar, Minecraft is one of the best selling video games in history and a favorite of mine. It's an endless blocky world where players can do almost anything from building entire cities to fighting off monsters. In our folder, we have data from Wikipedia, information from the Minecraft adventure books, research papers of the use of Minecraft in education, and most interestingly, a Dungeons and Dragons styled monster guide detailing different monsters in Minecraft. So let's select all these files and add them to our import tab. 
Now we can configure each file individually. We can modify the title, add a link to the original source, and apply labels for future filtering. Our new metadata feature allows you to add custom information to your documents. This document level information will be used when embedding chunks and providing context to the LLM. Let's add a Minecraft label to all files using the apply all function. For the Wikipedia data, we can also add the original source link. For more advanced settings like chunking and embedding, let's move to the config tab. We offer various chunking methods, token, sentence chunking and semantic chunking, recursive, markdown, JSON and HTML chunking powered by Langchain. Each technique has different use cases depending on your data. For now, let's stick with the default token chunker, which uses Spacey under the hood. Spacey is a lightning fast, open source NLP library running on Scython, a must have for any NLP related project. We can also configure our embedding model. Verba supports all sentence transformers from Hugging Face, all Olama models, and API services from Voyage AI, Cohere, and OpenAI. But the most interesting option personally is our new VV8 embedding service, currently in development. It uses the open source Snowflake Arctic embed model with the ability to return different sized vectors and will support much more models in the future. For now, let's use the embedding service. Once we got everything configured, we'll save the settings and hit import all. Verba will now take all of our Minecraft data, chunk it up and embed it into our local VV8 cluster. So let's take a look at the documents tab. This is where we can inspect our imported data. On the left, we've got a search bar that uses BM25 to help you find specific documents. You can also filter by labels if you want to narrow things down. The document explorer shows you all the interesting bits about each document, the full content, different chunks it's been split into, and its metadata with information about the file size, extension, and any custom text assigned to it. For our Minecraft wiki, we can also click on go to source to get redirected to the original Wikipedia page. My favorite part is the vector view. This shows the PCA of all of our embedded chunks in a 3D space. It's designed to be a tool to explore your data. You can play around and get a better sense of how vector search works behind the scenes. You can look at it for individual documents or all of them at once. In our view here, you can see that the different documents are all bunched up together, forming a kind of cluster. This is a good sign, since it means that our embedding model has done a good job of grouping similar semantic topics together. All right, now that we've got our data all set up and explored, let's start chatting. Let's head back to the chat interface. Here we can configure our retrieval settings to fine tune our rack system. First things first, let's make sure that we're using the same embedding model we selected earlier. Next, we need to choose an LLM to generate answers for us. We support all locally running Olama models and all models from Entropic, Cohere and OpenAI. For now, let's go with Entropic's Cloud 3.5 Sunny model. Lastly, we can also tweak various retrieval settings. Verba makes use of VV8's powerful hybrid search, which is a combination of keyword search and vector search that allows to find semantic related results based on our queries. To control the number of chunks returned, we can use VV8's AutoCut feature, which automatically determines how many chunks to return based on its sensitivity. Think of AutoCut like this. Whenever we detect a significant difference in similarity between chunks, we make a cut and create a group. This value determines how many of these groups we want to include. For instance, a value of 1 will return the most relevant chunks before the first cut. If you ever feel like you're not getting enough data, try increasing the autocut value or switch to using a fixed number of chunks. Our advanced retriever also uses a window technique to fetch surrounding chunks. We can adjust the window size and set a score at which we want to apply this technique. But for now, let's keep the settings as they are and save our config. Good, finally we are all set to start chatting with our Minecraft knowledge base. Let's start with a simple question, what is Minecraft? Verba now returns related documents with their related chunks that we can see on the right side. We can look and browse through the different chunks and the text passages with the most relevant context. Meanwhile, in the chat, our anthropic model is using the context to generate an answer to our query. Looking at the answer, it definitely sounds like Minecraft. Let's follow up with a more specific question. In our D&D monster guide, we have some information about a specific monster called Blaze. It's a floating fire thing that shoots you and is absolutely annoying. So let's ask, what is a Blaze? It's returning the right passages from the D&D document and gives us its description plus some interesting facts. Okay, but how do I actually fight these things? We now get some great tips on how to prepare for a fight with places. A chatbot in Minecraft would be super interesting. You might have also noticed that we get autocomplete suggestions. Verba saves your queries and returns them if they match your current input. 
Verbo also uses the context of your previous conversations to help generate the answers. Let's make this demo a bit more interesting and add more data. This time I'm using our demo data we used in the Google Hackathon for Princess Maxima Hospital last year. We have synthetic generated patient notes that protocol the patient history, treatment plan and anamnesis. We also have a research paper on methotrexate, which is one of the substances used in cancer medication. Let's add these files to the import tab and add a medical label to them. Let's also use the same configuration as before. Now let's go back to the chat and ask who is Amanda. Amanda is one of our synthetic generated patients and we get a pretty good answer from Antrobic. But we also see that we fetch some Minecraft data, which can potentially cause some confusion for the LLM. If you have a lot of data with different domains, it might make sense to play around with the recall or using filters. Let's try our question again, but this time adding the medical label. We now only look at medical label documents and retrieve their chunks. This makes the search not only faster but also improves the quality of results. But that's not all. We can also filter based on documents. If you know the documents you're interested in, you can add them to the chat. Let's add the research paper and ask what method track state is. It will now only receive chunks from that specific document. This is extremely helpful when you have a lot of data. Alright, we now used API services to do all these things. Now let's delete everything and use sentence transformers for embedding and Olama for generation. Everything running local. Let's add the Minecraft files and use Mixbred AI embed large for the embedding. After the import, we go back to the chat interface and use Llama 3.1 for the generator. Let's ask the same question as before. What is Minecraft? The retrieval and generation is now happening all on my device, locally with no data leaving. This is really great if you're dealing with sensitive data. All right. The data I just showed you wasn't really that much and was also kind of cherry-picked. Let's now increase the data amount. At verba.vva.io, we have a full cluster of all VVA documentation, videos and blog posts, with up to 500 documents and thousands of chunks. We're serving this as a live demo for you to play around. Let's see how well Verba can handle a large amount of documents. Let's start easy with what is Weviate. It retrieves the introduction doc, which looks pretty good. All right, let's make it a bit harder and ask for code examples of hybrid search and the Python v4 client. It gives us some code snippets for hybrid search. Nice. We can also filter for videos and ask for what is Verba. We now get chunks from our previous videos, which you can also get redirected to. All right, so let's actually get Verba on your device. I would recommend checking out our readme on our GitHub page as the installation process can change in the future. To install Verba on your device, you need to have either Python or Docker. When using Python, make sure that you're at least at 3.10 and create a new virtual environment. If you install Verba on an existing environment, you might have clashing dependencies, which can cause errors in the future. Once we have a clean environment, we simply type pip install golden verba. Once installed, we can directly use verba start and voila, you got verba. To make life easier, you can also create an environment file with all API keys so you don't have to add them to the front end each time. On our readme, we have a list of possible environment variables you can set. If you run into any installation problems, feel free to create issues on our GitHub. To get the newest updates and features, you can also install from source. For that, you simply clone the repo and do pip install -e. If you want to use Docker, we have a Docker file that you can build and run with Docker Compose. With Docker Compose, path to the environment file and dash d dash dash build. It will build both VV8 and Verba in one container. Verba is a community project at heart and it has been amazing to work so closely with you all. If you have any ideas for new features, feel free to create issues or PRs on the Verba GitHub. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.